guys, it's Sue, your Not So Crafty Crafter. I'm finally getting around to doing that video on some of my most used inks. Um, this is part of the series for crafting and stamping for beginners. It's more about crafting, I guess, but of course, absolutely, stampers are going to get something from this. Um, I will try to post my playlist below. I've done one on paper, one on adhesives, one on cutting tools. This is the one that I've been promising to do for a while, and it's on some of my, like I said, most used inks. Uh, I would like to say favorites, but I don't use enough to actually have a favorite. Um, <clears throat> I don't spend a ton of money on crafting stuff. I look for the deals. Um, I am just getting started. I've only been crafting in general for two years. I've only been a card maker for about a year solid. Um, I did start about 18 months ago, 20 months ago. Um, but I'm just getting into it now, full throttle, really loving card making. I've done scrapbooking. I've done, you know, the adult coloring. I've done art journaling. And some of this stuff is a carryover from art journaling and um, scrapbooking times. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing I wanna show you is this one that I got when I was art journaling. It's called Palette. It's a hybrid ink pad. It is waterproof and that's why I bought it because I was doing a lot of art journaling and I wanted something that I could stamp an image on and not worry about the ink moving when I put a layer of Mod Podge over it plain and simple that's what I needed but I'm finding that it works really really well when I use my Stampin' Up markers or when I use watercolor this actually isn't watercolor um I like to watercolor a lot I like to use watercolors in some of my stuff so this works really well for that I got this at Hobby Lobby I'm not going to tell you what the price is because I can't it was two years ago, two and a half years ago when I bought this, so I don't remember. I would probably say in the $5 range. Not a bad investment. I still use it. It's still really juicy. I just did all this stamping a few minutes ago before I started the video, and that's just a single stamp. It's not using a stamp tool going over and over. It's just a single stamp using a Stampin' Up! stamp. It says thank you. And you can see it is waterproof. I went over it. Actually, I did not go over it. I went over something on the back and the water bled through and it didn't move. So definitely look for this one at Hobby Lobby if you're looking for something that's waterproof. The next one I have is Memento. Now, this is the Tuxedo Black. And the reason I have this is because I ordered myself some Spectrum Noir alcohol markers. I wanted some alcohol markers because I love the blending effects of them. I cannot afford Copics right now and honestly I'm just starting out and just playing so I bought the 72 set, 72 piece set from HSN and like most budget conscious people I'm using Flex Pay to pay for them and I only have two more payments so yay. <clears throat> Definitely something to think about if you're new to the crafting world or if you want some nicer quality things or you're not going to find your Copics on there, but Spectrum Noir from Crafter's Companion are a very good product. So definitely think about that. Um, but anyway, the Memento is awesome for alcohol markers. Now, I just stamped it as is so that you can see how it stamps as a basic black ink. And I wrote notes here, Memento Tuxedo Black. Alcohol marker, water-based. I got this at Hobby Lobby. Now, this was probably a little more expensive. I want to say this was probably in the $7 range. But still, not a bad investment if that's what you're using it for. And, and then that's another qualification. You buy it, it might be on sale, or you're going to use it. You need to use it. If you're spending money and you're not using the product, then you're not saving any money, are you? You've just spent $7 to put on a shelf and it's not doing anything for you. So make sure that when you're investing, especially when you're investing in higher end products or higher priced products, that it's something you're going to use. Next is going to be my Ranger dye ink pad. Now I picked this up at Tuesday morning for $1.99. The reason I know the price is because the last time I went up there they still had some and I bought two more. They're still in their overwrap. I'm not going to open them until I need to. Um, this one is a dye ink and I did go ahead 
these are all dye inks, I believe. I did go ahead and stamp it out on a separate sheet of paper and I went over it with watercolor. It's actually a Stampin' Up marker with a water pen. And as you can see, it did not move at all. So that was kind of cool. So definitely think about using your Tuesday morning Ranger ink pads for that. I would, like I did here, I would test them out before you do it. Maybe it's the paper I'm using. I don't know. This is basic Georgia Pacific 110 pound card stock that I had pre-cut for card bases and I just had it off to the side so I grabbed it. And then the last black ink that I've been using and I don't use it a lot anymore. I picked this up at Walmart. This is Studio G by, yes, Hampton Arts. And I was surprised. I thought this was going to be, you know, a waterproof one. But as you can see, it is not. I stamped it here, and when I put water on it, it doesn't seem to have moved a lot. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm looking at the wrong one. You can see that, that gray. There's leftover orange from when I did this one, but you can see it definitely went from black to gray and moved all of that ink around. So definitely not waterproof, but I stamped it on this side, and I used my Spectrum Noir markers, and it didn't budge. It did not budge. So this is another good one to use when you're using your alcohol inks. It's Studio G Hampton Arts. This is from Walmart, so I'm going to say this was probably in the $3 range. Don't quote me on that, but I know it wasn't that expensive. So that's what I have for black inks. I do have the black soot from Ranger from the Distress Inks. And I use that specifically for when I'm playing. Now, some of the other stamps that I like to use <clears throat> on a regular basis are, of course, going to be for color. And these are the three that I use the most often. I do have others. Like, I got this at Michael's. It was in a clearance bin. And I want to say I paid like 3 or $4 for it. I got it basically because there's a ton of colors in it. These are recollections. They're just little cubes. I have not tested them to see. I'm sure they'll run with water. Let's see. Let's go ahead and check this out. Let's try this. Because like I said, I, I've had these and I've not done anything with them. And let's take my... Oh yeah, see those are going to move a little bit with water. So when you're buying these kinds of things, test them out. Well, that's good to know. I can watercolor with these and not waste my good inks. <laughs> ah, sorry, that was bad. But definitely if you're looking for color, you know, look all around. There's lots of different brands out there. Um, these are some of the ones that I use. Of course, Stampin' Up! I was a rep for a little while. These were actually not this particular one, but Stampin' Up! pads and stamps were the first ones I ever bought years and years and years and years ago. Um, I want to say like 2003, a friend of mine was selling. I sold Avon, she sold Stampin' Up! and we would bounce off each other. I'd buy a few things from her, she'd buy a few things from me, and then we'd have, you know, some fun together. Um, I bought stamps from her. I bought the roller stamps, if you remember those. And I bought like three basic colors, more for Christmas, red, green, and a light blue. And I still have those. And I still have the stamps. So that shows you the quality of these. Now, these are some of my favorites for playing with water because they are water soluble. And there's a whole array of colors. I wish I could so show you what I have. I don't think I have all of them. But a friend of mine's sold. She was a rep as well. And she sold all of her inks and markers that she had that matched. And maybe someday I'll take a snapshot and share it with you. But he also built her, a relative built her a case. So I have them in a case with a hole for the markers. And it's amazing. But I do use those a lot when I'm looking to work with color also have distress inks from tim holtz who doesn't love tim holtz products i do not have the full sets of these i started collecting the minis over the summer and i'm up to set 13 
I only have two more sets to go and I'll have the whole set. I do store them in the metal containers. I store them though by set. I do not store them like in the color of the rainbow family. I want them stored by set so that if I submit anything to a contest or if I decide that I can do tutorials, I can tell you what kit they came from. So you know what kit to go out and get because I know some of them, I know some stores sell them as singles. <laughs> I prefer to buy them as the kit. I get them at Hobby Lobby. I use the 40% off coupon and rather than pay $10.99, I pay like seven something for them. And I think that's an excellent deal and it's an excellent way to go. It's also why it's taken me so long to collect them. Cool thing is these are great for blending the distress inks and the distress oxide inks. Um, get these cool blender foams with, and you can get it set with a handle. I love these because I put my blender foams right in the back. Now this is a new set. I just got this. I haven't even used any of these. So that's why there's no foam in the back. But most of my others you'll see have the little foam thingy in the back. And I, these are loose. I don't, I need a new tin because I'm on my last set. But you can still stack them with them in the foam. And that's those. I love these because these are so cool for watercolor play. And then my last one that I really love is my Distress Oxides. If you're new to stamping, Distress Oxides are a little bit different than the Distress Inks. The Distress Inks are a, if I'm not mistaken, these are dye ink, correct? Yes, Distress Inks are a dye ink. Distress Oxides are a fusion. I'll read it right here. Water reactive dye and pigment ink fusion that creates an oxidized effect when sprayed with water. Used with stamp stencils and direct to surface blend using ink blending tools, which was what that foam thing was. But these are awesome. And I had, oh, here it is. This is, I'm almost positive. Yeah, these are distress oxide inks. And basically what I did is I blended a couple of colors on my thingy and then I sprayed it with water let it sit for a minute and then took a paper towel and you can see how it gives it almost a chalk like finish. And I also did one on my, you know, I just went direct to paper with the pad and now this is a distress ink and you can see it blends, but you can see how this almost has a chalky finish. This is the distress oxide. <clears throat> And these two are very fun to use with water um, when you're playing. I, I really don't have a set way that I use these or my distress inks. 90% of the time when I don't have a plan of what I want to do, I'll take these out and I'll just play and I'll put ink to, to block and pick it up with a paintbrush or I'll blend it and add water to it. It's just more for play for me. Um, and, I really want to master using these, so that's how I do that. I play. Um, for right now, that's pretty much all I have on inks. Um, I know there's lots of other YouTubers out there that have a lot more information. Check them out. Um, K Warner Designs, Jennifer McGuire. There's, there's, there's tons of them. Um, just do a, a YouTube search and... You know, distress inks. Tim Holtz. Oh my God, I'm forgetting Tim Holtz. He has little, tons of videos on how to use these two products. So definitely search him out as well. In fact, search him out first because you're going to learn so much from watching Tim Holtz. And you might want to check out his Facebook page and his, if he has a YouTube channel, I'm, I'm almost certain he does. Definitely check out his Instagram because he's at Creativation and they're releasing so many new products. You're definitely going to want to catch that and see some of the videos that some of the other YouTubers out there are videotaping and going live on Facebook. Um, gosh, Hedgehog Hollow with Alexandra, Aaron Reed. Jennifer McGuire is there. I don't know if she's going to do anything live or not, but those two have been doing tons and tons and tons of live videos. Aaron alone has probably put up five or six lives already. I know Hedgehog Hollow put up a few yesterday and was just live 10 minutes ago with um, Deflecto storage units. So check those two girls out. They have tons of information to share. 
Um, I'm going to wrap this up. Thanks for watching. Thanks for spending your time with me. Let me know if there's anything that you can add. Put it in the comments. Any questions you might have, stick it in the comments. Hit that like button, subscribe, and click that bell icon if you want to see more when my YouTube videos go up. Thanks for watching. I'll get back to you soon with my coloring stuff. Bye!